Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. In today's video, we're going to look at using your RSP for performing antenna comparisons. Why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you've just uh, built yourself a new antenna and you want to see how it compares with uh, your existing setup. Or maybe you just want to look at how each type of antenna performs at either different times of the day or how it performs on different bands. Now you can do this with any of the RSP devices. Uh, the simplest one being the RSP1A. It only has a single input, but you could certainly connect the first antenna to the device, run SDR Uno, and uh, maybe take some screenshots of the performance. Then disconnect the first antenna and connect up the second antenna, and then uh, take screenshot of how that performs, and then compare the two screenshots side by side. Alternatively, if you have an antenna selector switch already in your shack, then obviously you can take the output of that to the RSP1A and quickly switch from one antenna to the other and see how they can perform that way. Things are a little bit easier if you have an RSP2 because the RSP2 has multiple antenna inputs on it. So if you have uh, different antennas hooked up to the uh, various ports on the RSP2, you can simply switch between them using the uh, selection button within SDR Uno. And then a third option with our newest device, the RSP Duo, it has uh, two tuners inside. So you can actually simultaneously look at two different antennas in uh, real time and uh, put them up side by side on the screen and uh, do the comparison that way. Now, before we go any further, I just want to introduce you to my antenna farm. Uh, I kind of use that expression tongue in cheek because it's really nothing special. As you can see at the top there, I have a disc own antenna. Uh, I use that primarily for VHF and UHF, but you might be surprised how well it performs as you go down uh, even into the HF bands. Second up, we have my random wire antenna. And uh, just for record keeping purposes, I, I did measure it. It's 87 feet long. It runs in a north-south direction from the side of my house down to the uh, fence at the back of my property. And it sits about 10 feet above the ground and I know that is far from ideal for this type of antenna. Uh, furthermore, if you are a member of the uh, SDR Play Facebook group, you may have noticed uh, some time ago I experimented with using a new Elec Ballon with this antenna and uh, basically it's supposed to improve the matching uh, between the antenna itself and the feed coax that goes to my RSP and the way I had it hooked up is I had the long wire going into one terminal on the balance side the other terminal on that side then goes to a ground rod uh, right near where the antenna attaches to the house and then the unbalanced side of the ballon uh, feeds about 20 feet of coax which goes inside the house and is hooked up to the RSP. Thirdly is the uh, magnetic loop antenna you see on the right. Uh, there's a slight optical illusion here. It also sits about 10 feet high and uh, the disadvantage it has is that to the west which is the left as you look at it, it is uh, somewhat screened by my house and to the east it's somewhat screened by my neighbor's house. The other disadvantage it has is that I do not have any sort of rotator hooked up to this device, although I did put a handle at the lower end of the pole so I can manually rotate it in case uh, I'm trying to get reception in uh, perpendicular to the loop, which is where the nulls are with this type of antenna. First up, let's take a look at using the RSP2. In this instance, we have the random wire antenna connected to antenna A and the magnetic loop antenna connected to antenna B. So what we're looking at here is uh, the output from my RSP2 and connected to antenna A, I have the random wire antenna and on antenna B, I have uh, my magnetic loop. Um, I've cranked the RF gain down a little bit below the maximum. Uh, the reason for that being, and I'll demonstrate this, if I, if I go the gain all the way up, uh, what happens is I get a lot of spurious spikes across the spectrum. 
which is primarily due to the fact that here in Dallas I have a lot of AM broadcast stations uh, transmitting and in particular KRLD is transmitting 50 kilowatts on 1080 and I'm only about 10 miles away from their transmitter. So to minimize the effects of that the first step is to uh, reduce the gain a, a tad and the other thing that's very good for the uh, AM broadcast stations is to engage the AM broadcast band notch filter and uh, if I do that you'll see that I can actually get the gain all the way up without much problem. So um, that's the setup. Uh, we can take a look at some of the other bands on 20 meters. Uh, there's a nice bit of activity going on as well. And uh, the purpose of this exercise here is that we want to compare the performance of the random wire with the magnetic loop. So if we just switch back and forth between the two, uh, here's the magnetic loop. Uh, not a whole lot of difference, but I think the magnetic loop comes through just a little bit hotter. I don't really see any significant change in the noise floor between the two, although that can vary when you uh, move to a different band. Let's have a look and see what's happening on 17 meters. Uh, okay, the random wire is about minus 125 dBs. Uh, antenna B may be a little bit less, close to 130. So uh, it's fairly typical that I see um, some reduction in noise floor. And you'll also notice here from the waterfall that the Magnetic loop is really coming in a lot hotter here on 17 meters. Uh, if we go the other way and look at 60 meters, uh, see if anything's happening there. A little bit of activity there. And again, if I now switch to antenna A, uh, not seeing so much difference in the noise floor now. Uh, but in fact, if anything, antenna A seems to be performing slightly better. Uh, I can just tell from the intensity uh, of the signals appearing on the waterfall. And we'll go back to the magnetic loop again. So, um, again, one of the things you might want to do anytime you're comparing different antenna setups you have, and it's very quick and easy to do this, is, is look across all the different bands. Because different antennas obviously perform better on different bands. And uh, if you're lucky enough to have at least two permanent setups, uh, you may find that either for a different band, one antenna is better than the other, or even at different times of the day, one antenna will work better than the other. And it's very quick and easy to go across multiple bands here using uh, SDR Uno and quickly switching back and forth between uh, uh, the two antennas to see what difference there is in performance. Uh, the other thing you can do is if there is a particular station you want to monitor, um, it's kind of hard with most HF activity because the signals are not constant, but you can tune to that particular frequency and you will see a measurement of the signal to noise displayed by UNO and you can compare that as you switch back and forth between the antennae. Probably not a good example I picked there but uh, I think you get the idea. So that is uh, basically how you can quickly switch back and forth using an RSP2. Obviously you could do the same thing with an RSP1A if you had an external antenna switch. You could uh, switch back and forth uh, using the switch and just see how the two different antennae uh, compare with each other. Now we'll take a look at using the RSP Duo. On Tuna 1 we still have the random wire antenna whereas on Tuna 2 we have the magnetic loop antenna. So now I've reconfigured my setup to use the RSP Duo and uh, in this configuration I have the random wire antenna on Tuna 1 and uh, the magnetic loop is on Tuna 2. So as we did before with the RSP2 we can switch back and forth and compare the performance of each. Uh, the first thing we notice uh, right away is that with Tuna 2, which is the magnetic loop, the noise floor has gone down significantly. But uh, as I mentioned, this is really just the same as using the RSP2, and since the Duo has two tuners, we can do some uh, additional tricks with it, and I'll demonstrate that now. So first up, we will uh, go into dual tuner mode. I'm going to rearrange the windows and put uh, tuner 1 in the top half of the screen, and now I can go and open up a second instance of SDR Uno, for the second tuner. 
and again now that's opened up I will uh, rearrange the windows and I'll make this the slave and so now we have tuner 2 in the bottom half of the screen and uh, tuner 1 in the top half so again we can we can start the signal going and uh, we can see what's happening on uh, 20 meters in this case and uh, we can now go down and start the second tuner also on 20 meters and uh, now we can easily compare the two together uh, it would help if I made the scales the same so we'll move the spectrum base down to about 110, 115 and uh, we'll extend the range a little bit so it matches up with what's in the top display so now we can look simultaneously between uh, the two tuners again this is the random wire up here and this is the magnetic loop down here so if I click on a particular signal for example this one here we can read the signal strength and the signal to noise for the random wire antenna and we can immediately compare it to the signal strength and signal to noise on the magnetic loop so uh, that's a very useful tool to quickly go back and forth uh, we can look at different signals look at their relative signal strengths or indeed we can quickly switch between bands and uh, do the comparison there as well still using the RSP duo we will now compare a disc on antenna on tuner 1 with the mag loop which is still on tuner 2 Okay, so now I've reconfigured my system to look at two different antennas. On Tuner 1 now I have my uh, disc own, and on Tuner 2 I have the magnetic loop. Now the disc own is specified to work from 25 meters up to 1.3 gigahertz. Uh, the magnetic loop is specified to be uh, 500 kilohertz up to 30 megahertz. So perhaps it's slightly surprising that I'm getting some performance at least out of the uh, disc own all the way down on 40 meters which is you know a little surprising it's not fair to expect it to perform as well but as we go up in frequency and let's go look at 15 meters now and uh, hopefully we'll start to see the performance pick up with the disc own uh, already up here we see um, that we have a lower noise floor on the disc own probably what between 115 and 120 dBs uh, compared to about 112 or so for the uh, magnetic loop um, although having said that I am obviously seeing better signals coming through uh, from the uh, magnetic loop antenna if we go up still higher in frequency let's go to the upper bands let's have a look at two meters that's always a good uh, indication and we'll go to two meters on this one also and we'll have to change the settings to bring the spectrum back into view there we go and we'll change the settings on this one also we'll try and make them just about match up so about 130 like that and uh, at this point the band looks completely dead doesn't it um, let's uh, move around a little bit and see if we can pick up any activity elsewhere there we go so uh, Here's a little bit of activity. Uh, you see the bounce. That's uh, obviously somebody broadcasting um, pretty strongly nearby. And so here's a signal here at 144.4 uh, ish. And uh, obviously the magnetic loop has run out of steam at 144 megahertz, which again is is hardly surprising. Um, the reason for doing the comparison here was mainly to point out that. The Mac loop seems to do a really good job uh, all the way up to 30 megahertz and the uh, disc own seems to do a good job uh, from as low as, uh, as we saw earlier, uh, 15 megahertz or less all the way up to uh, 1.3 gigahertz. So those two antennas working in uh, parallel seems to be a pretty good uh, combination for the, the general listener uh, that wants to exploit the frequency coverage range of the RSPs. In this video, we showed you how the RSPs are useful to help you evaluate your antenna performance. 
The RSP2 allows you to quickly sw switch back and forth between antennas to compare how they act. The RSP Duo adds the ability to monitor two antennas simultaneously in real time. Either way, the SDR Uno calibrated power readings allow you to make accurate comparisons of performance either instantaneously on the screen or if you use the Uno recording feature, you can come back later and compare antenna performance over longer time frames. We hope you found this useful and as always, thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website at sdrplay.com. 73.